it's not appropriate for me to start this one off with a peace greeting either, but uh, I'm going to give a shout out, though. Thanks to uh, S. Jock for coming through on the Cash App from the bottom of my black heart and from the depths of my black mind. I mean that, man. Thank you. Um, shouts out to Senor Conga um, and S. Jock for coming through with the links. And I'll state this about uh, Cash App from here on. Um, from from now until I buy a sign for the business, uh, there are options now available to where I can get a sign for the equivalent of a uh, fourteen hundred. You are not responsible for financing that. That is on me. However, uh, I will use any cash app donations coming in the future towards that to help with that, and I'll take on the rest because that's my job. Um, and I'm telling you all this because. I believe in transparency. I mean, some of you have supported the channel, so I'm going to be transparent. Um, just like first when I was uh, uh, putting it towards not using all only donations to pay the salaries, but putting it towards the salaries of my employees. Now we're at a business model where at least the work that they do generates the salary. Um, and if we do operate at a loss, the only loss would be the rent and electricity, the fixed cost, if you will. So I'm telling you all this in the interest of, interest of transparency. And I want to thank the supporters again for the support. I appreciate that from the bottom of my black heart, from the depths of my black mind. Shouts out also to all of my first class flyers on Jet Black Airways. Those are the ones. Uh, if you want to join the first class, you got to go to buy me a coffee and subscribe there. Business class are the supporters that, that throw in a few coffees every now and then not monthly recurring i want to give a shout out to those business class subscribers as well i put things on buy me a coffee that uh, i don't place on here they do have to do more with working and living here uh to give you an insight and then sometimes with working and living abroad in general um the good and the bad of it all now um let me go ahead and tell you why i'm covering this shouts out to bgs and to lewis kanye they covered a bunch of divesters that had their own live stream on clubhouse lewis kanye had his live stream covering the replay of theirs and it's about six hours long i got through half of it bgs did another coverage of it and i got through listening to that one this morning my time i'm not going to repeat the things about which they talked they covered it enough and that's good shouts out to you gentlemen for that i appreciate it um i'm going to point out something about that divesters live stream though that others didn't quite get did not pick up on because it's important for us to realize and i've come to understand this number one the lady that ran that is named almaz and she said to somebody tadius denani that is how you greet a male in the amharic language not a female almaz is a dead giveaway to me that this is an ethiopian woman because while the word for diamond is the same in both Amharic and in Arabic, the practice of naming one's daughter Almaz is an Ethiopian practice. So that told me she's Ethiopian. And then she spoke to someone and said, Tadius Danane. That's how you say it to a man. And that told me right there, not only is she an Ethiopian feminist, Miss Andrus, divester, but she has male sympathizers. This means that they have gone further beyond what I suspected. I told you these feminist misandrists coming out the West are going to export this as best they can, wherever they can. They met resistance in Southeast Asia. They're not meeting enough resistance in Africa. I told y'all that. The woman that runs the YouTube channel, Keep Africa Passport Bros Free, is also Ethiopian, I think. She's definitely East African. She sounds like she speaks either Amharic or or Oromo or Somali as a first language. Her English is good. She has fewer subscribers than she has viewers every time she goes. And she pretty much blasts Austin Holloman, but she's pretty much like, you know, keep them, keep a passport. We don't want these. Um, she doesn't say the same terminology, but she's pretty much saying we don't want these dusty niggly bears in Africa. What she really means is we don't want these black men from the diaspora going back to Africa unless they're rich and loaded. Pretty much, really, we don't want them going back at all because they're not white. Now, Passport Joes fly under her radar. Michael Oliver has not gotten a reaction from her. And that man was sitting up there passing HIV around like it was cookies and bragging about it. How easy it is to do this because why not? 
boasting about this. He did in East Africa with DJ Kid. Did Roger Pope did in um, the Carolinas. Minus the age difference, I think. <sighs> These guys, I don't think a lot of you realize um, the depths of hatred that come from the sisters. And I've stated before, it is it is at its most virulent form a Western phenomenon, but it is not limited to the Western sister. And I am now being shocked at how quickly it is spreading. That's not all either. You see, there was a woman speaking Arabic, which means she was probably Sudanese on that same live stream with Almaz. I didn't think Sudanese women were clued in on this. But I should have known because before the current war broke out, there was a commercial ad in Sudan, in Sudanese Arabic, talking about colorism. And I said, oh, my God, that is the literal translation of it. What the F, man? Because it ain't dudes that be on that. Then it was a Haitian American talking about Africa and getting it wrong. She would take things that are true about particular portions of Africa and just apply it to the continent as a whole and then say that everybody gets this but black Americans and she's a Haitian American. No, Caribbean black folks don't fully understand tribalism. They understand other divisions like political divisions, but not tribalism because we're all of mixed tribes from back home. All of us in the diaspora. So what the fuck is she talking about? And the Sudanese nor the Ethiopian Neither the Sudanese nor the Ethiopian decided to correct her. Foot the walk, man. What this means is that the various nationalities, FBA and otherwise, of sisters, I say that sarcastically, are willing to let each other wrongly depict our home continent just to um, diminutize the black man and they don't care about nationality. They mostly talked about black American men, but they don't really care about nationality because since there's no nationality of rich black men, they don't like black men in general. We are niggly bears to them and they said it. And they like the notion of, um, police officers of other races doing us in. I mean, it wasn't on this live stream, at least not that I heard yet, but there have been live streams where they have expressed um, a very clitoral satisfaction, if you will, at seeing George Floyd pass away. This particular live stream did not contain that to my knowledge yet, I have not finished listening to Mr. Kanye's coverage of it. But I wanted y'all to pay attention. So when this is why it is that I said previously, and now I'm showing you some of the evidence for it, or rather I'm pointing out to you some of the evidence for it. I said previously, gentlemen, listen, this whole division, not distinction, but the division between the different nationalities of black men is not something that is coming from us because it doesn't serve us. We would not create this. We don't create barriers for ourselves. It is not in your interest that we are up here scrapping. And when Senor Conga and I get along, well, it is not against your interest, no matter what your nationality is as a black man. It does not go against your interest that he and I get along well and trade notes about what is going on in Nigga America or Angola. Guess whose interests are frustrated by this? Not only Zaddy, but his hyena. It is also against her interest. As a matter of fact, she's more bothered by that than Zaddy is. 
Zaddy kind of says, well, I mean, it's nice that we can divide them, but you know what? At the end of the day, they're really just all one big niggerilla because that's how he views us. But she's looking like, oh my God, I can't believe this division's not working. These N words are really all the same. So when he says they're really all the same and she says they're really all the same, it doesn't sound the same because they don't mean the same thing. She's frustrated. But she should know this because she, who is Southern Nigerian and values men only for demoni and the Ethiopian that looks down on black men, even though her nationality defeated the Italian army twice. And the Sudanese, even though her men eventually threw the British out. And the FBA, even though her men marched and fought until it became safe and legal to immigrate to the U.S. without being white from various parts of the world. All agree on because they're the same when it comes to their view of the black man. They see the black man as the same while being aware of our distinctions and differences. And they are upset when they can't turn them into divisions. That's what they mean. Whereas Zaddy means, well, they're the same to me, but let me try these divisions and see, let me see if I can turn these distinctions into divisions. Let, let me give it a shot. But to me, they're really the same. I don't really care. This is something I don't fully understand. But I know what's there. I understand its existence. I cognitively grasp that it's there. I don't know all of its motives, but it is there. And I wanted you to pay attention to this before any one of you starts automatically going in on somebody else that is black, but not American and starts calling them a tether automatically without actually catching them doing something deserving of this. Keep in mind that that's where you take a distinction and turn it into a division. And that is not in our interest. That is something that the sisterhood, the hyenocracy wants, and the hyenocracy itself is cooperative between nationalities of black people as long as they're women and as long as they look down on black men. In other words, this division that some of us in the black manosphere really fostering and really love is not even, it's not even the division of the hyenocracy that is fostering this. It's coming from them and they're not even practicing it themselves. Trust you me. Believe you me. See, that hyena that is FBA hates the pick me that is FBA more than she's ever going to hate that southern Nigerian woman who, whether she's feminist or not, looks down on black men that aren't loaded and wealthy. With a stank, filthy, funky attitude and a weave to match. Trust you me, that hyena from Baltimore will love any sister from the continent as long as that sister is so-called empowered and misandrist and looks down on black men. And she will hate the other sister from Baltimore that actually is a sister and is a pick me. Trust you me. They are not practicing division amongst themselves Based on nationality, gentlemen, they're practicing it amongst themselves based on hatred or lack thereof for you and me. Don't forget it. That live stream on Clubhouse covered by Lewis Kanye and BGS on YouTube is evidence of it. I hope that what I've said really helps and benefits you in your understanding later on. And I mean that from the bottom of my black heart and from the depths of my black mind. As always, thank you for listening. And black heterosexual non-select male power just because they don't like it and black patriarchy until extinction of Judgment Day. And thank you for flying with us again here on Jet Black Airways with a phrase, Jet Black, not a nationality, but Jet Black is also a verb. Keep jetting black with us until the wings and the wheels fall off. Gender justice forever. Haki na huru sasa na milele.